I want to say good morning to the saints and welcome back to Covenant of Grace TV. Thank you for joining the channel this morning. We're going to continue with our teaching on the doctrine of human suffering. This is part seven of an eight part series. We've been talking about the biblical reasons for suffering. In our definition of suffering, we said suffering is a product of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden and the consequence of human sin against Yahweh. Suffering implies overcoming pain, distress, sickness, poverty, or loss. We've covered six already. Let's do a quick recap of those six we've covered. We said, number one, to learn obedience to Yahweh's divine plan. Number two, to develop patience and endurance. Number three, to resolve the angelic conflict. Number four, suffering for righteousness sake. Number five, suffering due to gluttony and diet. Number six, we talked about self-induced suffering from poor decision-making and actions and ref refusal to conform to the will of Yahweh. Now, today we're going to deal with number seven, suffering to provide orientation to the grace of God. Okay, our main scripture is going to come from 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Then am I strong. Okay, this is our main scripture for the orientation to the grace of God. And you can see straight from the scripture, sometimes this requires suffering. This is not a popular topic for people to teach on, but I'm teaching on it because it is is part of the scripture and we need to understand it so we don't be confused. So this word orientation means to become familiar or introduced to someone or something. So this orientation, we're going to be introduced to the suffering, to the suffering of, of Christ. All right. The something is his suffering and the someone is Christ, okay? So we're establishing some clear definitions here. Here we're talking about infirmities of being sickness of the mind or body, disease, feebleness, frailty, or weakness. We saw where Paul talked about when I'm weak, then he said, then I am strong, okay? So we can see sometimes we pray for things to be removed that may not be Yahweh's will at the time of our prayer. Okay, so we see Paul asked for this thing. He asked three times for this thing to be removed. And the Lord answered him and said, my grace is sufficient for thee. So sometimes we can pray and things are not removed immediately at the time we pray. Saying, look at look at Luke 22 and 42. This is Christ saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Now, we need to understand the removal was not possible because Christ was born to go to the cross. So the removal of the cup was not part of the plan. And Christ goes on and says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. 
Okay. Sometimes we are stripped of human power and must depend on Yahweh's grace alone. Grace is undeserved, unmerited favor of God. Even in pain and distress, we must remember all things work together for good, even though they may not or it may not feel good. It's working together for good. This is part of the suffering for the orientation to grace. He goes on to say his grace is sufficient. His grace is made perfect, perfected in weakness. So let's talk about some key principles in this orientation. How we use suffering as an orientation to the grace of God. John 3 and 30. He must increase. Christ must increase in our lives. But I, we must decrease. This is a very important principle. For him to increase, we must decrease Okay, part of our orientation, suffering, orientation to grace. Look at Romans 8, we're going to have a little while to get through this, Romans 8, 17 to 39. And if the children then heirs, heirs of God and heirs with Christ, if so, therefore we suffer with him that we may also be glorified with him. So this part of our orientation to suffering, to the grace of God, suffering is part of that grace because what? Christ suffered to put grace on us and we are heirs with Christ. So the scripture says, so be that we suffer with him that we may also be what? Glorified with him. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not what worthy to be compared with the glory which we shall be the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the honest expectations of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, all creation is waiting where this glory could be revealed in us. Okay. So we need to understand that they're waiting for that manifestation. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the reason of him who had what subject the same in hope. Because creation, because the creature itself also shall be what? Delivered from bondage of corruption, okay? And to the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the whole creation is suffering, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All right, let's move on. But well, we know that the whole creation groaned and travailed in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which what? have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, all right? Waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Okay, I need to clarify and talk about something here that you will fully understand what he's talking about, what we're waiting for. I want you to understand there's a three-step process so salvation is a process, and I want you to understand the three-step process. Step one, we must be born again. For a lot of us, that's already happened. We've rec we received Christ as our Lord and Savior. Step two is sanctification. As we grow in the word, we grow in grace, we grow in holiness, God, what sets us apart for, right, for, for his service, for his work. So that's two steps. We got being born again, we got being sanctification, but we're still waiting 
for our glorified bodies. Our bodies have not been redeemed yet. And we need to understand that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven according to the scripture. All right. Our flesh and blood, okay, must be what? It must, we must take off corruption and put on incorruption. So this is our, what, glorified bodies that we're waiting for the redemption, all right, of our bodies, all right? So since we've got that cleared up, let's move on. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Well, what if the man see it, why do he yet hope for it? All right. But if we hope for that, which we see not, then do we, all right, then do we with patience, what? Wait for it. That's where patience keep, kicks in. I've been teaching on the need for patience to undergird our faith, to hold the faith door open as we wait for what? the redemption of our bodies, that we get these glorified bodies. All right? All right. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. We have infirmities. We have weaknesses. All right? That the Spirit intercedes and helps us. But we know not what, should, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself what make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. All right. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay, according to the will of God. Not my will, but your will be done. And we know that all things work together for good for them that love God to them who what are called according to his purpose. It may not always feel good, but it's working together for good. We've got to remember that. It may not always feel good, but it's working together for good. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. What this is saying, God has predetermined that this whole process is designed to what? To conform us to the image of Christ. This is the whole process, all right, of salvation is to conform us to the image of Christ, that whole three-step process being born again. All right, going through the sanctification process. All right, redeeming and getting our glorified bodies, which is step three. All of it is designed to conform us to the image of Christ. So in this orientation to grace, we have to understand Christ suffered. All right, so we have to endure some suffering in this life so we can also be glorified with him when the sons of God are revealed. Moreover, when he did predestinate them, he also called. And to whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he didn't justify, then also he glorified. What shall we say to these? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all, for us all, how shall we not with him also fee freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yet rather risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who also make it intercession for us? Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep 
for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. I hope these scriptures and teachings have blessed you. This is number seven on our reasons for suffering. This reason for suffering is to orientate us, give us orientation to the grace of God. May God bless you. May Yahweh keep you until we have another opportunity to bring you another word. Take care.